Thank you, Andrew. Okay, you made the introduction already. So mm -hmm. hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to uh, show like a few features of Open Review uh, in our uh, dev site environment. So we have uh, these dev sites to make demos to all the branchers that want to use Open Review or users or test new features. So I prepare like a new venue called Demo 2023 Conference. So you can see here in the slide. Um, so this is our dev site. So it's also, um, you can access to that one. Uh, but I'm going to show you like a few things that you can do. Um, first, I'm going to show you how to set up a profile. So this is, uh, let me make this bigger. So uh, uh, if you can see like this. Okay, uh, so see, this is the homepage of our uh, dev site that is very similar to our live site, openreview.net, but we have a few like um, testing uh, venues. Um, so in order to use Open Review, you need to have a user and a profile um, in order to register and to interact with the system. Uh, so when you go to the login page, you can just log in or sign up. Um, to sign up, we will ask you to enter your first and last name um, so we can check if there is already a profile associated to your name or you need to create a new one. So in this case, I can see that um, I see my profile that is in the system and a few email addresses associated to that profile that I can either like reset the password because I forgot the password and, and I need to access again, or you can create a new user, okay? Um, so I'm going to, um, to log in with a user that I already created that in this case is Andrew's user that has more information because he's like a researcher and uh, it's more interesting his data. So when you log in into the system, um, you can go to your profile. Uh, so this is like the public view of your profile. So anyone can search your profile in the system and, and see this page. Uh, the only difference that we don't show you to like other users are the email. So we mask them. So in this case, um, so you, you see them because Andrew is logged in, but if I logged out and I enter to Andrews, then uh, the emails are not fully shown, okay? Um, so let me log in again. Uh, so I want to show you what you can edit in the profile. Okay, so, so there are several sections in the profile, so you can enter all your different ways of um, write your name and you can set one as preferred. So that one is the one that we are going to use to show um, your name in the whole system. Then you can enter like gender, year of birth. This is all like optional data. Um, then all your email addresses. It's very important for us that you can enter all your emails that you've had in the past. So then we can use that as uh, for conflict detection in the future. That's something that we use for uh, assigning uh, reviewers to papers. Uh, it's very important that your profile is complete with all the data um, as much as possible that we have. Um, but for email communications, we only use the one that is uh, set as preferred, okay? Um, then you have uh, home pages. So there are a lot of links that you can enter. Um, there is one that is very important for us that is called DVLP URL. So DVLP is a computer science uh, open database that contains a lot of like uh, publication data of researchers. Uh, and we use that information also for the matching system because we want to know which is your expertise. So in this case, Andrew like entered his like homepage from DVLP. Um, that if you if you go to this page, um, you can see all his publications. Um, so from here we can import that data. So you have to click here, um, and then there is a pop up with all the publication that we found in that homepage, and then you can select which publications you can import. You can select all of them to import all of them, or just like a few of them because some of them may have like wrong like co-author, um, like co-reference, sometimes DVLP fails like uh, recognizing Andrew because there might be another Andrew McCallum 
that is also a researcher, and sometimes they mess up with the author's names. Um, so then once you import your data, the, the, these publications appears at the bottom of the profile, okay? Um, okay, following the homepage links, then we have the education side career history. We also uh, ask you to enter your institution uh, information. Also, it's very important to, to know who you are, but also to use this for conflict detection. What we do is we like try to find intersections of domains between the reviewers and the authors of the profile. If there is like an intersection of domains, um, then we detect that as a conflict. Okay, so here is all the institution data. We also have uh, relations. Uh, you can also enter the relations, like all the like researchers that you worked in the past. Um, and also you can select if you want that to be visible to the public or to different like venue organizers. In this, this is a like a dev site. So I don't have too many options, but there should be here more like uh, venues. Uh, so if you're going to be like a, a reviewer of Neurips or an author, then you can select this option. So that relation can be visible also, also only to the organizers and not to everyone, okay? And the last section is the expertise, where you can enter also like a set of keywords uh, with your expertise. Uh, everything has like dates, so you can put the start and end date and leave uh, the end date empty if that is, is your current like status, okay? Um, that's all about the profile. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show is how to set up a venue. Uh, anyone can uh, create a profile in Open Review and um, request um, hosting like a new venue. So I created like a user like that that is represents like a program chair of this venue that I created. But anyone that has a profile can go to this section that says hosting a venue, and when you click there, you should go to this like support page where we um, receive all the requests from the users when they want to host their venue. Um, so what they need to do is to like uh, click here to like enter a lot of information about their venue and some settings and configuration, and then we will review that information and um, assign a venue ID, okay? So this information is going to be used uh, for the homepage of the venue, for the uh, workflow, so depending on the visibility of the reviews or the submissions, and if the reviews are going to be public, submissions are going to be public or not. So all the information is can be um, set here, okay? Um, usually, so this uh, form is uh, built in a, it's very like, a, it's very similar to all the computer science uh, conferences or venues that are doing peer review. Um, that's why sometimes you see like area chairs, senior area chairs, ethic chairs, but we were like hosting other venues that are not from computer science and, and we could adapt this um, configuration to their needs, okay? But this is maybe your, the names are not familiar to you, but it's very common to have reviewers, area chairs, senior area chair, ethic chairs in, in a venue, um, okay? Um, so for the, for the venue that I created, I just had um, this form complete. So this is all the information that I put. And then uh, someone of the Open Review team um, set like a venue ID that is um, this um, this string that is here. So this is the the ID of the home page. So if I go to um, Open Review, um, then this is the the, um, the same ID that I see in the URL is the um, home page that represents the venue. Okay, so anyone that wants to submit their paper into this conference, they should go to this home page and uh, click uh, here to add their submissions. Okay, and this is the submission form that Emily was showing before. Uh, this is like a default form, but you can use the configuration um, request that we have here to um, customize that form, okay? So you can add some fields with like checkboxes, radio button, text area, etc. 
to the form using um, the revision button here, okay? So here you have a lot of settings where you can set, um, change the configuration and add submission options. So here you can add more fields to the submission form, okay? Um, so yeah, once you create this uh, form, it was deployed and then you set all the submission limit, um, data, then this will become available to the public and they will start entering the submissions, okay? So what I did is um, I already submitted some papers um, in advance to show you. So the pronoun chairs um, have access to this pronoun chairs console that is like a dashboard for the pronoun chairs to monitor the data. Okay, um, so I like submitted 100 submissions. I already added like uh, some reviewers, area chairs and senior area chairs. Um, so to show you some data. So when, if you go to the paper status tab, then you can see all the 100 submissions. Uh, you can also click on each ones and then go to their like, what we call like submission forums. And this is where everything is happening. Like the reviews are being posted, the comments are being posted, the decisions, authors can edit their submissions or not. That's depending on what you want to enable for the venue. Um, there are different options. You can do everything from here. So you can start the review stage, you can start the comment stage, you can start the submission revision. So you can add all this functionality using this request form. Each of these stages have like um, a start and end date. So you can start it for a short period of time um, and that will become enabled for the users and then will disappear once the, the expiration date is reached. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have these uh, submission forms. I uh, submitted 100 submission form. I added like a, reviewers, area chair, and senior area chair. So what do we do next after all the authors submitted their papers? What we do is we try to assign reviewers to papers. So how do we do that? So what we have, what we do is, is to run our like automatic paper matching. And in order to do that, we need to like get some data from the users in order to know how to find what's the best reviewer for each submission. How do we do that? So we go to the same venue request and we have one button here that is called paper matching setup that you can click um, and you can uh, request to set up the, the assignment data. Uh, here you can select the, the group ID that you want to use. In this case, I can use like just reviewers. You can select if you want to compute conflicts um, if you want to compute conflicts, you have different like policies that you can use. Um, these policies, uh, the difference between them is that which data of the profile you want to use to, um, um, to compute these conflicts. So default uses the whole profile data. So it's using all the institution domains, it's using all the emails, all the relations that you have in your profile. I will try to find an intersection between reviewers and authors. If there is one intersection of domains, then there is a profile detected. Uh, in the case of Neurips, they requested, uh, so Neurips is a, is a conference, one of the largest conference in computer science, and they um, decided to build their own policy and they have some rules. For example, they don't use uh, emails to compute conflicts and for the institution information, some roles are not being taken into account. For example, if you are like, a, if you did a, like an internship at Google, that is not taken into account uh, as a conflict, the domain google.com, because you were working there for just for a few months. Um, and the, the, the second parameter is the number of years that you want to use uh, for the conflict detection. As I showed you in the profile, you have dates for each uh, piece of information. So what we do, if you if you put like five here, so we only take only the five, five years of your history to compute conflicts. And then we have affinity scores that um, this is like um, another like API that we have running in our system that computes similarity scores between users and um, reviewers and submissions. And we also use information on the profile here. 
that is the list of publications. That's why uh, for Andrew's profile, I imported all the DBLP papers because we use that data in order to compute these scores. Um, what we'll basically do is like we take the paper tit titles and abstract of each uh, publications and compare them with the submission title and abstract, and we see how close they are. So if they are very close, then the, this score is uh, closer to one. Otherwise, it's closer to zero. And then when, with a score like closer to one, then uh, that means that you can be like a, more like an expert reviewer for that paper, okay? And we use all, so once we compute conflicts and scores, um, these uh, conflicts as an affinity score are represented as edges. So these entities are being used for the uh, paper matching um, that I'm going to show now. Okay, so I am not going to compute this because it can take, um, it's depending on the size of the data, it can take like minutes or hours. So I already did it for the reviewers group. I computed conflicts and affinity score. And now I'm going to show you how to run the matching. From the program chair console, um, in the in the section, in the all review section, you have like a timeline with all the stages that are happening with the start and the end date. And then we have the section to run the, um, the paper assignment. So I'm going to click in the one that is to assign reviewers to papers. So this is like a new UI that we uh, use to run the paper matching. Uh, first of all, you need to create like a configuration to decide the parameters of, um, of the matching. Um, you need to like put a title to see um, how many uh, reviewers you want to assign to each submission. In general, it's three, but you can use four, five, one, it's, it's depending on your venue. How many papers you want to assign to each reviewer, the mean and max. So then you can like balance the quotas. Um, and then you have alternates, that is the number of alternate reviewers that you want to offer in case that you want to make like manual modifications. Um, this is information about how to get the submission. He, this is information about um, the group of reviewers that you want to assign to papers. And this score specification is where we uh, enter all the uh, scoring data that you want to use to op run, that is going to be uh, used by the optimizer. Uh, in this case, this, this string is the name of the invitation that represents the affinity scores. These are all the edges that I mentioned before, uh, that when we compute these similarity scores, we store them as edges using this invitation. So that means that we are going to use uh, the affinity data to uh, um, assign reviewers to papers. Then this is another invitation that represents the conflicts that I already computed. And these two invitations represent different uh, constraints that you want to enter in the system. For example, this customer papers is if you want to like set a specific quota for a specific reviewers. Some reviewers, uh, besides the number that you put here, they can put five. Some reviewers say, I cannot review more than two. And then you can, um, like set like um, a quota for that specific reviewer that is only two. In that case, we are not going to assign more than two papers for that. We are not going to use this uh, file. Uh, for custom user demand, it's also to override this user demand that we have here, that is like three, the, the number that we usually do is uh, three reviewers per papers. Um, but you can, for a specific paper, you can decide if you want to assign more or less reviewers. That's, you can set that too. And finally, this is the solver. So we have different like optimizers uh, that you can use. Uh, they have different like uh, particularity, like the, so characteristic. So you can, um, I can give you more information if you want about how they work, but um, you can test with different of these solvers and, and, and check the results and then select one that is best for you. Uh, so I already did one here. I already run one that is complete. And so, but I can run another one. Um, with the action copy, you can copy an existing configuration and you can edit that configuration and then run it again. 
So once you submit the node, then you can click in Run Matcher and that is going to call to our matching API and then uh, run the optimizers. Also, this is, can take like minutes or hours, it's dependent on the size of the data. In this case, with 100 submission, it took like less than 30 seconds. So this is the status that says it was complete or you can get like an error, like a no solution error. That is probably one of your constraints is too restrictive and we cannot get a solution. In that case, you have to edit the configuration and relax the constraints and then run it again. So once you get like a result, you can click in view statistics um, and this is like a um, some visualization about the data. So you can see um, that all the papers have three um, reviewers assigned and then you can see uh, the distribution of the assignment for reviewers. So in my configuration, the mean and max was two and four. So that means that the reviewers get between two and, and four papers, okay? And this is the um, distribution of the um, affinity scores. And uh, this is more information. And, and then you can go back and browse the results. So you can click in browse assignment and you can see, so the first column is showing all the submissions and then you can see here the number of assignments of that submission. And when you click, you can see who are the reviewers assigned to that papers. And then you can also click again in a reviewer and see which are the papers for that reviewer. And then keep browsing and, and check the results. You can also search reviewers by name you can also search them by expertise of their profile. Um, you can also sort them by conflicts or by affinity score. So conflicts, the ones that are in red are the ones that have a conflict. So there is no assignment for them. Um, so, and then you see like the affinity score here. This is the number that we got like, com like comparing the publication between the, these reviewers and, the, and this submission. Um, okay, and then once you can also make manual changes. So you can like manually assign this reviewer because you think that this reviewer is, um, is the best one. This one is, is a, has a conflict because it's the same author. So you see Jonathan Scarlett is the author of, uh, of that submission. So we cannot assign that reviewer, but we can assign this one if we want. So now the paper has four reviewers. So you can keep four or you can remove another reviewer. Okay. One, once you like made all this manual modification, you can click on uh, deploy assignments and that is going to release all this assignment to all the reviewers. I already did that uh, with this uh, configuration. And once we deploy them, they appear in, in this uh, status tab. Okay, and then uh, I can log in as a reviewer. So the reviewer can enter to the reviewers console and they can see uh, their assigned papers and their review task. So I already like started a, a review stage and entered the review for one of the paper. Um, so then you can see uh, the review posted here. Um, I think that's all. Um, the last part of the demo is to show like how we handle the visibility of the data. Um, so all these like um, information that we show in the forum is, is like um, everything that is represented as a node entity. So this is the submission metadata that is represented as a node, same as the reply. They are all nodes in the system. And these nodes, they have two, two properties called readers and non-readers. So these properties are the one that says who can see that node and who cannot see that node. Um, in the UI, how we show this is we show that with the eye icon. So if you hover the eye icon, so you can see who can see that um, submission node. Um, in this case, it's showing that it's, assigned, it's visible to the program chairs, 
to the assigned senior area chair, to the assigned area chair, to the assigned reviewers, and to the, and to the authors. So that means that this, this is not public, but you can use your venue configuration to release this to the public if you want. Um, another eye icon is also um, the identity of the author. So in this case, I'm logged in as a reviewer. So the reviewer cannot see who are the authors. That's why we show the, the, the author group that represent the author. But if I log in as a PC and I go to that paper, um, or any paper, I can see who are the reviewers. But there is an eye icon that says, okay, these, these authors are only visible to the organizers of the conference and the authors itself. That means that the reviewers, the area chairs, and other like members of the committee cannot see who are the authors. And the other, and the other like um, um, property to see, uh, to set the, the identity is the, the signature of the replies. So I, I'm going back to the other like forum, um, this one. Um, this is like uh, when you like post a reply, like as a comment or as an official review, you have to sign that uh, comment with your like um, with your like identity. Uh, in case of the reviewers, we hide their identity. How do we hide them? Is using like an unknown group ID, and the unknown group ID is the one that is being shown here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that says a re reviewer and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, um, and a key that we create. Um, this way we um, hide the identity of the reviewer. In this case, you can see uh, who is the reviewer because I'm logged in as, a, as, as, it, as themselves. But if I am like an author, for example, this is a comment that is only visible, is, is visible to the author too. Um, if I log in as an author, then I won't see the identity of the reviewer. And that's the last thing that I'm going to show you. So this is not uh, author demo. So this is a, as an author, I also have an author console where I, I see all my submissions. And when then I click in the submission, I can see the, the comment posted by the reviewer, but I don't see the identity. I only see the unknown ID. And I think that's all.